Hey everyone, so I am going to be filling you in on my public policy interview. So let's jump right in and start with participant one. So her background is in accounting and she is currently living in Japan. She's very interested in Japanese arts, animation, illustration, and videography. And I thought it would be really interesting to hear her thoughts on U.S. arts policy because of the separation that she now has from the United States by living in a different country and experiencing a different culture. And um, I was hoping to receive some interesting feedback on her perspective of U.S. policy now. So in our interview, um, I could tell that she did a little research on the National Endowment for the Arts and kind of she just covered um, how grants function in regards to the federal government, how tax deduction occurs for donors, and how the government encourages individuals to help sustain arts organizations that they find meaningful. Um, let's see, what else did we cover? So those were the, the main things that I gathered of her understanding of what the federal government does for the arts. Very basic, um, just, you know, grazing the surface of the NEA and a government resource for the arts. But she did bring up a really interesting point, um, which was how the federal government helps online art content creation. And she brought up the YouTube star Philip DeFranco, who is a who is an who is a, a YouTuber who started off as an an individual just himself. He then hired journalists and producers and created his own production company. Then YouTube started demonetizing his videos, and he had to open up a private production company because of that relationship. So she further explained that there is no government funding for production companies like his, and he could have lost support without the support of his fans. So, though his story was a success story, many YouTubers could lose their channels and livelihoods at any time due to YouTube's upta updates and changing policies. So, the strict guidelines that regulate federal grants often exclude online projects and the people who create content for those projects. These projects must then be supported only by their earned income and private donations. And another interesting point on that is the um, influence of net neutrality policy that's constantly changing and having a large impact on the success of online art projects and producers. Um, although the federal government is sincerely attempting to support the arts offline, they are not enacting policies quickly enough nor specific enough to help artists who are based online and create their content and work from the internet. So. I thought this was a very interesting point to bring up in regards to art policy. When I think of the NEA's definition of the arts, I personally would not have thought to include YouTubers and the videography work that they produce um, in the arts. So this was definitely a great point to think about and I want to pose the question to you guys, are YouTube stars artists? I don't know. So I guess that's it. She brought up a really, a really cool topic that I don't think I would have, you know, thought of on my own. Because are YouTube, you know, it poses the question: Are YouTubers creating art? Are they just creating, you know, content? Is it like TV? Is it like the news? You know, what are these people doing? Is it just their thoughts and opinions? So, um, yeah, that was. A really cool part of that interview. So let's talk about participant two. Their background is in economics and finance. They are currently living in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and they have an interest in the arts but very little experience and education specific to the arts. They never really grew up in an artistic family or were ever encouraged to um, participate in the arts. 
So I wanted to approach someone with a more rigid business experience and get their opinion on the arts. So this person was very analytical and wants wanted to research re, and wants research that provides solid facts and proof. The information they presented to me in our interview was definitely backed with research on the NEA and this person really wanted to talk they didn't really want to talk about um, philosophical concepts or ideals that may influence the arts. They wanted to focus on the facts and figures and the bottom line basically. You, um, they pose a lot of questions like are these programs effective? How are they effective? Does it work? If it doesn't work let's drop it and fund something else. Very, um, very straightforward with their thoughts on the arts. I think this was an interesting perspective to hear because I feel like most politicians and business persons have the same mindset. They want to get to the point and understand something as quickly as possible. So I think that when it comes to working with government officials and arts policy, this experience is going to remind me to be more concise and get to the heart of the issue instead of wanting to have an academic discussion or maybe be analyzing these issues and trying to gain like a really deep, deep understanding of the issue in its entirety. And not that that's, I mean, you should have an understand an issue in its entirety, but when presenting it to a government official or business person, you need to be able to give them a summary and just be really clear and concise because that's that's what's going to make the difference and that's what's going to influence their decision. So this person brought up some of the programs and initi initiatives of the United States Department of Arts and Culture, but primarily focused on the NEA and um, how the NEA contributes to artists and the communities by providing grants and creating jobs through arts and culture and how organizations have specific granting guidelines. So just very straightforward, again, another basic outline of the NEA's functions. Um, they also talked about how nonprofit organizations have use their funding to promote public knowledge of arts and the benefits it brings to communities. So that was a nice thought at the end. Um, I found it very interesting that participant one was able to think a little bit more critically about arts policy and take this interview as an opportunity to explore policy that was of interest to her. It showed me that her education on the arts continues to influence her curiosity on the arts and the issues that are important to her today. And I, f I, I think that participant two would have displayed more of an interest in arts policy if he had more of an interest in the arts to begin with and um, maybe had more experience growing up with the arts. And that would encourage him to take a closer look at arts policy and the arts in general. I could tell that they looked up um, what they thought the federal government does for arts and culture and tried to educate themselves on the issue. And I think that people generally do not have an understanding of arts policy and U.S. government policy overall. And we should work on that as a society. In order to educate more people on policy, it's up to us as arts managers to find a way to convey these important issues to not only government officials, but to our, the members in our communities and build a greater understanding and create more advocates for what's important to us. So thanks everyone. I'll see you later.